Should be live. Nope, should be live now. Can you guys hear me? Hello, Sophia. Oh, exciting. It's your first live, and Lincoln's here, too. He's under the desk, and he's chewing on something. Lincoln, what are you eating? He's stuck. What are you doing? I should make sure the audio is working. What are you doing, Muffin? Oh, no, no, yeah, we're hey guys, sorry. <laughs> I just sitting there playing with Lincoln, trying to get Lincoln not to eat the Patreons. He's really, uh, he's really going after a few of them. So, especially the snowman, which is a ghost. Whoops. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday, Snow Trying to get Lincoln not to eat the Patreons. He's really, uh, happy birthday to you. Can you really going after a few of them. Does that sound awful? So, we don't want the happy birthday echo. Especially the snowman. Hello, is a Ian. Woohoo. Where are you guys all from? We got Germany. Oh, thank you. Germany was cool when I saw happy it. Happy birthday. I'm back there again someday. You never know, but at least I got to go there because I'm part German, Hungarian, Norwegian. What else am I? Cameraman, do you know what else I am? German, what? Norwegian, Hungarian. What else am I? I don't know. Huh. I'm going to have to find out. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Double voice. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like Freedom Life. Sarah's too beautiful ca for Cameron. He doesn't deserve her. <laughs> <laughs> Got L.A. Oh, no, Echo. Oh, no. Hang on. I'm going to look at it. Echo, Echo. It might Make be. It I don't know. Make it stop. Uh, How did you do to fix it last time? I can't remember. Can you keep talking? You want me to keep talking even though there's an echo? Uh, yeah. Cause okay. Cameraman's trying to fix it. Nashville. I don't know what I am. I need my laptop. Oh, cameraman's doing a quick run upstairs. My hair routine, I eat, you know what, I use Moroccan oil. Pretty much all of their stuff. I'm kind of boring. I don't do that much. But my curling iron is the Beach Wave, which just has a button and then it swirls it, because I'm not good at it. So, the UV camera should arrive today. I was hoping it would come by now, but not here yet. The Echo's gone. Oh. Oh, okay, then I know what I did. Okay. Okay. Dubai. Part Bulgarian. I got you know what I'm gonna have to ask my dad what the rest of me I am because I can name three things, but is there a there might be a delay. You know what? Yeah, that, that's the problem. But yeah. Okay, cameraman's gonna fix it all. So. I think, no, no, I think it's fixed now. Oh, okay. But there we go. But okay. When we ask him a question, it's like 30 seconds before they can yeah. answer. Yeah. Lincoln is a German short-haired pointer, and the other day somebody asked if Lincoln was a French pointer, and I googled French pointer, and a French pointer and a German pointer, they look identical. So, you know what? Maybe he's part that, too. I don't know. It's crazy. So, he's adorable. He's like the sweetest little guy ever. He just loves to chase things. So, yeah, you know what? I'll do more hair care. I've got a hair care product review coming up in the next couple days too so and that beach waver curling iron is awesome i love that thing it makes it dummy proof because i'm just not good with it i'm not very good with my routine and apparently there's like a switch on it where you can make it go the other direction which makes the curls look better but i'm practicing that so maybe by next live stream i'll have it down and the curls will go the other way 
So, we'll see. Cameraman is... He's right there. My husband. Cameraman. He's kind of crazy like me, so... He listens to me all day talk about skincare, so... Does, you know what? I'm not totally sold on the lamellar water. It really does make your hair feel nice afterwards. I'm not totally sold that it transforms it. Like, more than like something like Olaplex. Olaplex kind of is pretty good, too. But my skin doesn't like Olaplex. I wish my skin could tolerate it, because when I use the Olaplex products, my hair feels really nice. And then... If I stop using it the next day, it goes back to normal, like, instantly. So, I don't know. Yeah. I know. You know what? Most days of the week, I just put my hair in a ponytail. It's sad. Don't tell my hairdresser that. Because whenever I get it done, she does it all nice, and I walk out. And within five seconds, I put in a ponytail. After I leave. And I'm in my car, though. So, she doesn't see it. But, I know. Oh, yeah. So... These are UV spot stickers, so you, you're supposed to put them on with your sunscreen, and then when it's time to reapply, they turn a different color. So let's see. Let's open it up. What I was am gonna... I fired for? <laughs> you're, you're, you're dancing on thin ice there. You're skating on thin ice, dancing I, on thin ice. Pretty much tough. I, I don't know. <laughs> you're fire it up, cameraman. What? It's, everything's working now. <laughs> so, okay, so there are these little stickers, I guess. They're smaller than I thought. And you stick them on when you put your sunscreen on, and then, I guess, throughout the day when it's time to reapply, they turn from purple to white. They should start purple. Hang on, okay, let me read the directions. Okay, should start purple if the spot is clear before its first use. Exposing it to sunlight will, sunlight will turn it purple. So apply it. Apply sunscreen over it and it will turn clear in sunlight. If it takes longer, it takes longer if it's cloudy outside. Obviously because there's less UV. If the spot remains purple, it means you need more sunscreen. Remember when sunscreen wears off after swimming, toweling off, or sweating? Spot my UV will indicate it's time to be sun safe and reapply. So, I really want to test these yesterday, but I totally forgot. So, I'm kind of annoyed with myself. But anyway, so, they're not cheap. But you know what? I think it might be a useful tool to remind yourself to reapply, especially if you're outside for a long time. So, we'll give it a, we'll give it a whirl. Cameraman does have hair, and he likes the Moroccan oil conditioner, don't you, cameraman? Yeah, it smells good. Yeah, he likes the Moroccan oil conditioner. Although not that bottle. It got, I got, like, the giant pump bottle of Moroccan oil conditioner, and it's, like, down to here. So I don't know if cameraman can keep using it, because it's about time to... I'll buy my own. <laughs> good, yeah. Get the hydrating version. you got to get the pump bottle, because then you don't have to pick it up every time. Yeah, so anyway, so these are a good tool can't hurt you know especially especially for people that don't remember to reapply it or days you're outside or if you're out exercising or swimming although it'll be interesting to see how sticky they are because some things that are sticky just fall off so anyway i'll review them after i get a chance to try them out i'm gonna move so. you guys oh okay we're moving yeah that's what I'm, I'm interested to see how how well they stick on the skin so and I'm really excited for the UV camera. I'm very excited to take a picture before and then after like three or four hours how good the sunscreen holds up, how well it stays on your skin. Especially some sunscreens just don't, they're not sweat or water resistant very well. And like Anessa ones have a special technology, which is way over my head, where if you sweat, the sunscreen works harder. It's over my head. I don't <laughs> quite understand that, but... That sounds like marketing. It, it could be marketing, but you know what? They have a lot of interesting technology, so. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to see how well the sunscreens stay on. I'm also a little nervous because I know, especially like in the winter, I have a tendency to under-apply. I just, inherently, I know I do. I don't know if it's, I'm, especially if I'm like in a hurry, I have a tendency to under-apply. I think most people generally do. Oh, Tiny Violet Beauty, thank you. Oh, 
I love doing this. It's so fun. So, I know. I wanted to do it a couple weeks ago, and that just ended up being, we had issues with YouTube, and then I had the hiccups for three hours before that. <laughs> and then by after the hiccups of three hours, three hours of the hiccups, my stomach was like, ugh. So, anyway. So, yeah. Okay, so Sun Natsu needs more sunscreens. Yours were all ones that failed. I know, they were so great. I can't believe that. How did all of us get, well, not everyone was fooled, but how did some really smart people get fooled? Like chemists and things? How are they fooled by this? I mean, I used this again the other day as a moisturizer. It's a moisturizer. I mean, the sun protection, they're, they're like around 12. I mean, 12 really. I mean, I have a feeling like almost any face serum with any amount of like titanium dioxide or anything is going to be 12. I mean, this is a lotion. That's all it is. So, I mean, so that's what my thought was when I reviewed it. But then I looked at other people who were like chemists and like smart people. And they were talking about how it's SPF 50 and it's the technology and it's other ingredients and all this BS type of stuff. And I bought it because I thought, I, I can't know more. But, I mean, I look at it. It's a freaking moisturizer. It's not, yeah. So, anyway. That's what I got to say about that today. So, oh, happy Mother's Day weekend. Hi, Lisa. Love you, too. The EV sunscreen I've heard is really great. I'm going to buy it this week. The EV mousse. I'm, I'm a little nervous about the mousse thing, the texture of it, but I'm very interested to see what it will look like under the UV camera because it's apparently a really great sunscreen. It's, like, expensive to get here, but I want to try it because a lot of people really like it. So, yeah, this 12, this is embarrassing. I just have a feeling, like, I have a feeling this moisturizer that's not a sunscreen probably has 12 in it just based on having some ingredients in it. I, I don't know how everyone's fooled. And I do feel bad for these little manufacturers because these, these little brands, because these manufacturers really were exploiting this loophole that says if you have a sunscreen that's already on the market approved and it's got the same filters, it's good. We want to hurry up and make a lot of products. We want to be a leader in the skincare industry. So let's hurry up and we'll, you know, get this loophole going so you guys can start making a lot of products. Don't have to worry about all this testing. I really exploited it. So, oh, Cryptid, thank you. I always love when I see your name pop up, too. Um, yeah, so they really, they really exploited this loophole and these brands, I don't know how in on it they were, if they actually knew. I have a feeling they had to know a little bit about it, but I think they probably trusted these manufacturers. And the sad thing is if they would have spent five grand and done an independent test on each sunscreen before they decided to sell it, this would have stopped. Maybe. Maybe not. Because other people probably would have saw a loophole and money to be made and exploited it. So it's annoying when brands put making money ahead of people's safety because people's <coughs> safety is the most important thing. And when you're making a sunscreen, it's not like making a face serum that people put on before they go to bed. People use it to prevent cancer. People use it that have cancer. People use it that have face or skin cancer that are going through radiation or treatment and things like that. So you're not just making a face serum. You're making something that's more important. And a lot of people try and kind of downplay it. Like, you know, it's use something else then. But when brands put money a ahead of people's safety, it, that's the thing that really irritates me is when money is ahead of everything. So, yeah. So I, I do wonder how much these brands knew. Maybe certain people at the company knew more than others, but... Um, yeah, so they really need to fix this loophole. I'm surprised nothing has happened yet, but I guess I don't know how the Korean legislature works or, or if it's like just a advisory board or what, but they need to fix this loophole. They need to fix it ASAP because this market is really going to get away from them because a lot of people don't trust them at this point. And it's sad because these little brands might not have known as much as we think they knew. So... So at this point, a lot of sunscreens are really in question, and it's unfortunate. And I guess there's some brands that make their own, which aren't subject to the loophole. So um, the NeoGen, not this version, but they just came out with a new Airy Daylight Sunscreen version. And they just tested that version. Uh, it just came out like a couple weeks ago. So I just ordered it today because it was sold out almost everywhere else. But the uh, new version, they went and tested it, and they said uh, they tested it uh, back in December 2020. 
Uh, they said after testing, the SPF value of the daylight protection airy sunscreen was found to be in line and true to our labeling and was qualified to be registered under the USA OTC regulations. So uh, FDA approved is, I guess, what that means, I believe. So it's not this version, which is the original version. It's their new version that just came out. And this one is really nice, but it had some fragrance in it. So I didn't use it as much as... I would have like any other sunscreen because I just fragrance on a regular basis irritates my skin but I can use it occasionally or if I'm in a hurry or things like that so the new version of this I think they're still testing this one is what I read from that so although this one I believe was under the FDA too so anyway so we've got that going so let me just check back with comments quick Okay. Oh, BD. Matt, happy birthday, Matt. We sang, we sang happy birthday, but it was echoing. So, happy birthday to you. We need, like, an original happy birthday song. Maybe I'll write something better. <laughs> I'm, a good, I'm a good songwriter, so. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Okay, I'm trying to get caught up. Sorry, guys. Okay. Yes, the Midnight Blue Calming Cream. I love it. A lot of people think it's too hydrating, but, I mean, you put it on at night, really. It's not more of a day cream because it does take a while to absorb, but I love it. Okay. So, let's see. The Claire's, the thing with Claire's and the other sunscreen is the cream that was originally tested included tons of zinc oxide that was labeled a tone-up cream, and it tested SPF 50 because of the zinc oxide. So, yeah, so that loophole was totally being ridiculously exploited. I have a feeling. I mean, how many K-Beauty sunscreens were on the market, like, eight months ago? How many different brands? I mean, each brand probably had four or five or three different sunscreens. How many brands? There's probably 200 K-Beauty brands, so there's probably 1,000 different sunscreens on the market. It, it's, it was crazy how many there were in all these brands, and so... This oh, loophole. Oh. Kristen. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Christina. Oh, I recognize her name. Okay. I rec well, you know what? It's That's the nice thing about having a smaller channel is I still recognize everyone's names when they leave a comment. It's instantly like I feel like I know who you are. Even though I've never met most of you, I feel like I instantly know who you are. So if I, got, if I got a million subscribers, I won't be able to do that. So I don't know. As long as I make enough money to afford my Snicker ice cream bars and my dog food, I'm happy. So, <laughs> so nobody else sub subscribed. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, okay, so Odalie, I, I always say her name wrong. Odalie, she did a newer video about how the brands lied about being misled by their labs. That was kind of what I had a feeling about, is that the brands kind of knew what was going on. It was kind of a wink-wink thing behind the scenes. So... Yeah, I have a feeling, and then you know, and then the interesting thing was like the brands. Their interest, their 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 immediate thing was to just blame the KFDA. Like this was regulated by the KFDA and approved by the KFDA, and technically it was approved by them, but not really like looked at or tested or really approved by them. So it was kind of uh, interesting. So, uh, so the new version of the Neogen. We thought, yeah, so it's their it's their Daylight Airy sunscreen. It's new. It's got, like, blue on the bottle. And I didn't see anything about the PA, but I ordered it today, and it should be here in a couple days, so I'll definitely do a, a review on it if I can. Maybe not in time for sunscreen week, but I'll review it after that, because this one was, I like this one, so. But Another one. Let's see. We're busy, busy. Oh, thank you, George. You're freaking awesome. I've got all of your sunscreens here. I've been playing with them. This one is so awesome. I can't wait to review this one for sunscreen week. So, I love it. I've had so much fun playing with all these. It's just, I'm out of control now with the sunscreens. Like, nowadays, like, I'll put, like, one on here and then one on each cheek to kind of compare them at the beginning of the day. And it's out of control. And the cameraman has to hear all about it every morning. Like, okay, here's which sunscreen I'm going to test here. And then I'll, yeah, anyway, so... It's out of control. I'm out of control. So, okay. Oh, uh, you can actually enable text to to the speech notifications via Streamlabs when somebody does a super chat. Cameraman's gonna have to look at that. 
Oh. I'm bad at computers, so. <laughs> uh, I'm bad at live streaming. Sorry. We're getting better We're getting at better. it. We are. So, okay, so Audrey said, last weekend two sunscreens failed you. Copper tone, pure and simple, and cool and mineral. Huh, applied to the top of your feet to test. That is so smart. That's sm a smart way to test them. Apply to your feet. You know what? I did, when I was like 17, I worked at the state fair, Minnesota State Fairgrounds, and I worked at like a car show, and I wore sandals, and the sandals are strappy, and I still have like the strap burns like 20 years later on my feet that burn. I was wearing these weirdly strappy sandals. I still have those burns. It's bizarre. But that sun damage is rough, so that's why you don't want to mess with it. You know, an interesting thing is... Uh, there was a recent post, I don't know if I printed it out, about Supergoop and their testing for their unseen sunscreen. And it fit everything, and it got the approval. There's no scandal here. It came out like SPF 41. It was marketed as SPF 40. But the real scandal is what broad spectrum really is defined as, because I believe the UVA protection, that was 9. But that's just fine. You get the broad spectrum seal of approval, and you can sell it. There's no scandal. They're not hiding anything. But it really is the U.S. market's fault because broad spectrum, really, if it has any amount of UVA protection, they're probably going to get the broad spectrum label. It's just really unfortunate that broad spectrum, but broad spectrum doesn't mean much. So, like, when I think of Kula, I mean, they, the SPF might be there for SPF 50, but you might not be getting good at UVA protection, I think. Most U.S. made sunscreens have that issue, and there's really, there's nothing anybody can do about it. It's not even the brand's fault because they're regulated on the amount of filters they can use, especially if it's a chemical filter. The UVA chemical filters that are approved in the U.S. are just not very good. They're not new. They're not exciting. So it's probably not even Copper Tone and Kula's fault, but the UVA protection may be there in a small amount, but... It's a bummer because in the U.S. there's really not much they can do about it. They can't add Juvenal, any of those exciting ones, or any of the, anything new or exciting that's been approved in the last 50 years, they can, really can't use. So, let's see. Uh, Philippine sunscreen market and SPF 80 sunscreen with the UV filters being 11 through the 14th ingredient. Oh, wow. wow. Did you see Meg? Oh, Meg. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry I'm getting behind. I'm so sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are awesome. Meg's too nice. You are too nice, Meg. <laughs> Someday, probably not this year, but maybe when the thing goes away, I'd love to do like an award show, like live. I think that would be awesome. And maybe we could even have some some guest presenters arrive. When I'm making the big bucks, then I'll fly them all in or something. <laughs> right? On my private jet. I'll fly them in on my private jet. Well, <laughs> exactly. We need a moderator. Oh. You need to moderate. Come on. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay. I'm He's trying. working. He's working on it. Oh, do I still recommend the Acure Whip Night Cream as a dupe for the Drunk Elephant Protini? For dry skin, it's great. For oilier or acne-prone skin, it might be a little iffy, but the new Dermatology Peptide Night Cream I found is pretty similar in terms of the ingredients. It's fragrance-free. Pretty good for sensitive okay. skin. And the Derm Store Day Cream, this is weird. So the Derm Store Day Cream is identical 100% formula to the Dermatology Peptide Night Cream. Totally identical ingredient list. So one is marketed as a day cream, the other is a night cream. But they're both pretty friendly for oilier skin and acne prone skin. But I do like the Acure Whip Night Cream. But for some people that have mentioned to me with really oily skin, they didn't like it because it was too hydrating, but it is a really good product overall. So if you have very dry skin, it's worth checking out. I love it. So, let's see. Yeah, <laughs> Freedom Life. I'm sure Keep Cool knew what was going on. Oh, those people. Oh, you know, I, the other day I saw that they were giving away toners as long as people paid a dollar, they would sell them a bottle of toner. So I'm kind of wondering if they're teetering out or not. They haven't really come out with any new products. So keep cool. I'll never quite get over the way they handled things. It was terrible. I mean, and then the apology was even terrible. I mean, how do you screw up an apology? You know what? 
apologies need to take responsibility, and they didn't. They just kept saying people were saying false things. Well, they weren't even false. But I'm sure one person might have said something ridiculous, and they kept holding on to that grudge, and then their apology was just terrible. So, oh, first debut here was half off on Macy's. Oh, we got to remember that. Where is it? You need a pen. No, I, I got that. No, I, I got that memory. Oh, here it is. I'm so annoyed that they changed this formula. But it's going to be half off, so I'm going to check it out. Hopefully it's the old formula. But I'm so annoyed with brands doing this. I mean, they took a good formula, and then they watered down, took the good ingredients out, and then just put the preservatives super high up. So there's really nothing exciting in here anymore. I'm so bummed by this. I don't know why brands do that. Misha, I mean, they, they change their formula all the time. So it's not like they're, like, doing something like First Aid Beauty, but they're, like, Ampule, like, so we're on, like, I can't remember what incarnation, but since I've been doing, like, YouTube, there's been three incarnations of their uh, treatment Ampule, and the first one was pretty good, mostly geared for sensitive skin, really no, not much scent, and then they redid it and added a lot more fragrance, and then they redid it again and added even more fragrance, so this newer version it is over the top. I can't even use it at all. It's so scented. Uh, so, uh, the original is good and pretty friendly for sensitive skin. Then they add a little bit of fragrance, and then this one comes out, and this is just like uh, straight up like perfume in a bottle. I, it's got squalane in there and the ferment, but then it's got orange peel oil, lavender oil, sandalwood oil. I mean, it is over the top. So, I don't know why First Day Beauty did this, but if you have suggestions, I'm going to work on a dupe for it. But if you have suggestions or ideas, definitely let me know because uh, right now I'm, I'm going to switch to the Purito Centella. But I like that one, but I like it a little bit more at night because it takes a little bit longer to absorb. This one just absorbed instantly. So nice. Very friendly. Seemed to work well for all skin types. And then they go and destroy it. I mean, anything exciting comes after Phenox Ethanol, which is not much very exciting. So, I don't know. Thanks, First Aid Beauty. I also got a lot of comments from people that mentioned they changed their Ultra Repair Cream and took out the Eucalyptus Extract, which still isn't great for sensitive skin, and then changed it to Eucalyptus Oil. I haven't totally confirmed that, but I heard that from several people. So, I don't know what the heck they're doing out there. Their last few products they've come out with have been kind of disappointing. They came out with a Peptide Collagen Night Cream. And I still mean to review it, but I just haven't wanted to even use it for 30 days straight. Because it has a little bit of fragrance in it. I just didn't like it that much. So I haven't even been able to review it because I didn't want to use it for 30 days straight. So, first debut, I don't know what the heck you're doing, but you annoyed me! And now you're on my list. So I'm going to get you. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. I don't mean that, but you know what I mean. I don't know. Oh, the Avene. This one, so this is the new Avene with the new... Trizor filter that they've got. So I've been used use this a few times now. Never got any tan, never got red, never got burnt. But the texture of this one is just so... I mean, it's probably meant to be more of a body sunscreen because of the size of it, I'm guessing. But the texture of it is just so goopy. And it is greasy. And I just didn't like it. But I'll certainly use it on, like, days I'm outside a lot. But it, like, goes on like that, and then you set it with powder, and then, like, two hours later, it's back to looking greasy. And I have super dry skin, so I can't imagine if I had oilier skin. It is just so shiny. Ugh. And the worst part is, you set it with powder, and then, like, a little bit later, it's shiny again. I really wanted to love it, but you know what? And I have this thing, like, when I initially try a new product, I, and so I almost always initially don't like it, no matter whatever it is. There's very few products I've tried initially and liked it instantly. So maybe if I keep using I'll like it. I have that problem with a lot of Tatcha products. I use them the first few times and I don't like them. And I use them a little bit more and then I end up liking them a lot more than I did. I don't know why. Why I'm like that. Maybe it's just I'm critical initially. I don't know. But maybe I'll end up liking it more. But definitely will protect you from not getting burned or tan. So that's a good thing. I guess I'd rather look greasy than get sun damage, but if I can find something that prevents sun damage and doesn't leave me looking or feeling greasy, I'd rather have that. So, I'm guessing this is probably meant for more of a body 
sunscreen, everything on here is written in a different language, so I have no idea what it says. So, maybe it says on here. It doesn't. There's nothing in here that I understand. So, anyway, there we go. Let's see. Okay, I'm trying to get the Biore sunscreens. Okay, so this Biore Perfect Milk, I really like this one. I think I'm going to try and review this in Sunscreen Week. This one's really nice. I used this all day yesterday when I was walking, and it's really nice. So I can't wait to see it on the UV camera. But it feels really nice. There's no fragrance in it. I'm starting to accept the fact that a lot of sunscreens will have alcohol in them, and some people feel say alcohol doesn't bother them at all, and some people it can irritate them. I found use a good moisturizer underneath it, and use a good moisturizer at night. I can get over the fact if a sunscreen has a lot of alcohol in it just because it seems to help them have a nice even film. Although I still find alcohol to be kind of irritating, drying for skin, but you can kind of uh, mitigate the damage by using a good moisturizer underneath it and using a good moisturizer afterwards. So, But yeah, here's the Biore Milk. That one's really nice. So I can't wait to review that one. Yeah, I used it all day. Yesterday, I sweated a lot, I walked a lot, I was in the wind, and my skin felt fine, and I didn't get tanned or burned. So, yeah, this one's nice. Oh, the Dr. Dennis Gross Physical Sunscreen, I'll be reviewing that one in Sunscreen Week. Wasn't a huge fan of it. It had a lot of citrus oils in it, and a strong white cast, and it's expensive. So, I wanted to love it, but actually, a nice mineral sunscreen, if you're looking for that, this, uh... Day Defense by BB Beauty. This one's really nice. No fragrance in it. It's all mineral filters, and it's pretty affordable. So this one is a nice one. So I'll review that one for Sunscreen Week too, which I'm getting excited for. You so announce when Sunscreen Week. Oh, Sunscreen Week is going to start May 17th, right? Yep. May 17th. So I think I'm going to do two videos a day for a week, and then finish it up with my favorites, the ones that did the best. And I'm still working on finding SPF lip balms. I've got a few that I've tested, and if you guys have any recommendations for SPF lip balms that you like, leave a comment, because I find so many of them have just a taste, and I don't like it. So, I'm still working. I found like three or four that are good, but I'd like to find more options. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to get caught up. Oh, Bangladesh. Oh, wow. Is it hot there? I have a feeling it's hot. Istanbul. Istanbul is so amazing. That bridge was so cool, right? That's in Istanbul, right? Yeah. yeah. So. The, uh... Uh, the BB sunscreen, I think I got this from... It was Look Fantastic or Feel Unique, one of those two. I'm not crazy about the company, but they sell a lot of products that are not easy to get in the U.S., so I have a tendency to use them for some of those, especially sunscreen, so, yeah. Okay. So what else? Oh, so we got, we talked about the Neogen one. I did my rant about the First Aid Beauty, which I'm still irritated by. Um, uh, then there was another study. Can you pull it up? The thing I sent you the link on? Yeah. So there was a... Wait, wait the Reddit thing? Yeah. Okay. So there was a big round of tests on several... There was a discussion? I, Party. No, the J Beauty. There's a chart down below. Keep scrolling. Oh no, you gotta click on the thing. Go back up. You gotta click on the actual thing. This national. Yeah, just don't there. the comments show. Sorry. They tested a bunch of. No, no, no. You gotta click on the. Go scroll down. And then right below that list should be the discussion. Here. Yeah. Oh, view entire discussion? Yeah, that? there you go. Okay. So there's a chart where uh, they did a test on several J Beauty sunscreens, 27 of them, and then the test results. So I found these interesting. I mean, testing can be so all over the place. As you saw, like, with the, with the Claire's, one test came back at, like, 12, and another one came back at, like, 25. So it varies on the tests, the methods they use. Uh, where it's tested, so you can get different results. But this one was just done by uh, the J Beauty, I think, Consumer Affairs Council, and they tested several J Beauty sunscreens. So 
if you're using any J Beauty or looking at them. This one is kind of handy because most of them did pretty good. There's a few of them that didn't do so well. But if you're looking at any of those, this is handy. I, I'm trying to like put together a list of all the sunscreens that have been tested, what they've come back at. So I'm trying to kind of collate that, but there's so many different sunscreens, there's so many tests, there's so many different countries involved. So anyway, yeah, so this is just handy I found to look at. So. Oh, I'm at Okay, perfect. Let's see. So I'm trying to get caught up. So the Roche-Posay SPF 50 lipstick. Okay, I'm going to have to check that one out. The can make sunscreen I really like. I'd love to test that one myself and get my hands on it because it's so nice. The can make sunscreen, and I feel like I've recommended it. I haven't seen it tested on any of these things. I mean, there's a lot of, like, little random tests, like this was tested, here was another test. Consumer Reports did this test, another thing did this test. I haven't seen it anywhere. So I'd love to get my hands on it and test it myself because it is so nice. The, the new Round Lab one. This one was already tested by the uh, gal from the Korea Skin Institute, and it came out as SPF 50, she said. This one's another one that feels, like, too good to be true. So it's almost like, if it feels really nice, it has no white cast, it's almost too good to be true at this point. So I think it's good for people to be kind of suspicious, I guess, generally. Just, it's good to question things, because not everybody's always right about everything. So that'll be interesting, so... Paris, France. I love Paris. Malaysia. Wow. Yes, I'm, I'm excited for sunscreen week, so May 17th. And then if there's any specific sunscreens you want, just leave a comment because I've got, I've got about half of them written, but maybe we could do three videos a day. I don't know. That might be a little crazy for a cameraman. I don't know. So, let's see. Okay. <laughs> I have tried the P20. The P20 was good. It's a little greasy. If you set it with a setting powder, it's better. Uh, but the P20 is does a pretty good job. So I just, it's not something I would choose on a daily basis just because it is kind of shiny. But for like a day outside, it's pretty good. So let's see. Apostrophe sold you 21 grams of tretinin. $75. Wow. That's a good deal. I have to check that out. The apostrophe. Sorry, I'm like way back up. I gotta get with it, so. I don't even know where you are. I don't either, so. Wow. <laughs> okay, so Snowdraft says this Japanese uh, sunscreen test was using a spectrometer, so that's interesting. So, all these things you take with a grain of salt because there's so many different things like I tested this, somebody tested this, this was tested here. Even like consumer reports testing. If you've ever looked at like the U.S. consumer reports that test a lot of like U.S. based sunscreens. It tends to be certain sunscreens that do well and the rest of them do badly. But for like that specific testing, they use like... Um, their water resistant one is like the majority of the test. So if it's water resistant, it's going to do well there. So the consumer report one even, it's there's just so many different ways to test them. It's crazy. And then there's spectrometer, then there's actual testing on humans. Like even uh, uh, in Hong Kong, they tested several sunscreens there. I think it was almost all of them failed because apparently in China they have very strict testing. So the test is really the biggest. The biggest secret in all of this is how it's tested. Especially, like, the I mean, it's crazy to have one lab come up with 12 and another one come up with 25. So the testing method and who's doing it is a big factor, too. So, yeah, it's it's interesting. I do have a few Color Science products that I'm going to review, too. Hang on, let me find one of them. This one I really like from Color Science, so I'll review this one for Sunscreen Week. Their powder I'm not too crazy about. The setting powder is great. Oh, geez, I can't get back out. Their setting powder is a great addition to sunscreen, but I would never use their setting powder as your sunscreen just because it's impossible to apply it liberally. Zero people apply it liberally enough to actually get the SPF they mentioned. So, yeah, so this one is their Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield. I really like this one. And it comes in different shades, I believe. This one is Glow. Or maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Anyway, so I'll review this one. I really like it, though. 
I just feel bad for all these U.S.-based sunscreen manufacturers because they're really just, they're really um, at a disadvantage because they can't use anything exciting or new. I, I do feel bad for them because it sucks because they could make some amazing sunscreen, but they can't because the FDA won't let them, really. So, let's see. Yeah, the Skin Aqua one, this one, the one with the pearl bottle and the gold cap, that, I think that's why they came out with the all gold version this year because this one has typically not done well in several different things I've seen it on. So this one I like to use on like a day-to-day -day basis, but if I'm going outside for the day or if it's very sunny out, this won't be my first pick, but it's a nice like day-to-day -day sunscreen and it feels very moisturizing, but I think this one had some issues on a few different tests, but the one in the gold bottle, uh, which my friend sent to me from Japan, along with the freaking cutest Pokemon sunscreens ever. Yeah, that one did better, so I don't know. Should I open these or not? I just feel like they're too cute. I don't know. I love them. They're so cute. Lincoln yeah. loves them, too. So, Should okay. show them a picture of me? Sure. I can see it. Oh. <laughs> are you, what kind of sunscreen are you wearing in that? Copper tone. Copper tone? Here's another one. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, you guys asked, you got him, so. <laughs> Maybe you'll get to meet him when I do the live award show. Maybe not this year, but hopefully by next year things in this world are normal again. I hope by next year things are normal again, because I think it would be so freaking fun to do a live award show. It would be so amazing. So, anyway, okay. So, I'm still, I'm still trying to get caught up. Oh, Audrey, thank you. You're awesome. You guys are amazing. I have the best subscribers ever. I do. So, thank you, guys. Okay, I'm trying to get caught up now. I can't. Yeah. I don't even know where you're at. You know, Dermatica is the, another one that I was checking out. That's another website that I've been... Uh, Freedom Life mentioned Dermatica. So, I'm going to have to check that out. Because I think this summer, I want to make the plunge from Adapalene to Tretinin. I think I'm going to do it this summer. Winter is not a good time to change up things because... Especially in Minnesota, it gets so cold and dry. But in the summer, I feel like I can try more things out. And my skin isn't going to dry and peeling and flaky. So I think I'm going to try it out this summer. I'll let you guys know <clears throat> when I do. And I'll make a video of it. So, yeah, the Skin Aqua Gold version, all gold, is really nice. I love that one. So, oh, thank you. You know what? I did get kicked in the face last night by Lincoln. So I've got, like, a huge, like, uh, owie on my face. He kicked me, and it must have been in the middle of the night. I got a little scrape here and a little scrape under my eye. Because he must have been having weird dreams last night, because he usually sleeps under the blanket. It's weird. But then his feet stick out, and then he just kicked me in the face. So, <laughs> Sorry, Lincoln! You know what? Only Lincoln could kick me in the face and get away with it. Well, I could probably, or one of the Yorkies, but nobody else could kick me in the face, so... Hey, Sarah, we've got 180 people here. Yes. You should tell them to give a thumbs up because we've only got 16. Oh, give a, th give a thumbs up, guys. <laughs> I've got two thumbs. Okay. Yeah, so the EV Moose, there was one site I found in the U.S. that would ship here, and I will, if I can remember what it was, I'll send you the info. I don't like to publicize the companies that will ship certain sunscreens here because I don't want them to get in trouble. So I just like to do it like personally just because I don't want to get them in trouble because I know typically they're not really supposed to send the sunscreens here because the FDA gets mad at them. But it's smuggling. It really is smuggling. It's sad. So who is Jose? <laughs> he loves cocaine. <laughs> Love a little cocaine in the morning. Eric Clapton. <laughs> oh, 63 Rambler. Thank you. I always love when I see your name popped up. Uh, have you changed your foundation preferences to show off the new quality of your skin from your game changers? And what are you using for coverage now? Uh, you know what? I still really like the Dr. Jart Premium Gold Bottle BB Cream. I just picked up on sale. It was like it was like 60% off the Cogen Doe Foundation, the Aqua Foundation. I really like that one, too. But typically, on a day-to-day -day basis, I still love the uh, Dr. Jart one. I know. I just, you know what? It's just, it just feels supernatural. So, thank you. My skin is looking pretty good, except that kick to the face. 
Did you see but. the Audrey? Yes, Audrey, oh. thank you. Lincoln is fired. <laughs> Lincoln kicked me in the face last night, man. Let's see, what do I think of SkinCeuticals products? They have their custom dose thing. Oh, I'm interested in that. Because I've been really into azelaic acid. I really think it can be really nice. It was a game changer when I added the Geek and Gorgeous azelaic acid in my routine. So I've been kind of playing with some things stronger. So that's interesting. I'm going to have to check that out. So I like most of the SkinCeutical products I've tried. Have all been really good. They're all really expensive. But they're all, they've all been great. So I haven't had any issues. A lot of their brightening products seem to be really nice. And some of their like anti-acne ones don't seem to be as good. But their brightening products from SkinCeuticals are all been great. I like their sun. Most of their sunscreens I've tried have been nice too. This little brand, I've just been testing this one out. Skin City. Sorry. Everyone, Skin City, they are based out of the UK, uh. but they have access to... Uh, a lot of different products, and they ship to the U.S., so I just picked this one up recently, and I'll uh, try and review this one after sunscreen week. But uh, they have an azelaic acid serum, too, that I've been about to test. So, I, you know, azelaic acid, it's, to me it's like niacinamide. If you don't have any routine, you should add it, because it makes a huge difference. I love azelaic acid. It's so great, especially if you have, like, rosacea or sensitive skin. It just is very calming. And really like clarifying the skin so I can't believe I was bit I've been in the skincare as long as I have and it's been just in the last year that I've, or the last two years maybe that I've really found is lake acid and found it to be really helpful the Paul's choice is lake acid was the first one I tried I just didn't love it I'm not exactly sure why I don't know if it's the texture a lot of people love it and use it and it's awesome but for me it was just I just didn't like it as much but now I'm kind of getting into it more and more so anyway so skin city if you're in the u.s it's worth checking out because they have some sunscreens and the other brand hello sunday i never heard of this brand up until like a couple weeks ago but they're on cult beauty and i've been testing some of theirs out and i really like some of their sunscreens and they seem to be uh all fragrance free I, none of them have had a scent that i've noticed so that's another brand we're checking out. And if you're in the U.S., Cult, Be Cult Beauty will ship it to the U.S. So that one's definitely worth checking out. And the other one is Ultraviolet I really like. But they're based in Australia. So I don't know. I tried. I'll review this one for sunscreen. The Sunday Riley one. For the size of the bottle, I just can't quite get over that bottle. How little it is compared to like everything else. And it's like three times the price. But... Uh, this one was okay. I don't know. It was average, so let's see. Okay. Oh, thank you, France. France Court. Wow. Oh, what do I think about the Misha sunscreens? So, the Misha ones, as far as I understand, they make their own sunscreens. As far as I understand, and you know, sometimes it can be hard to find who makes them. But if you can find them for sale on Amazon, don't necessarily buy them from Amazon, but Amazon, for a listing of a product, requires the seller to list the manufacturer of it. So that's how you can find out sometimes who manufactures a lot of them, if you don't want to buy it and then find out. The Misha ones, I had good luck with all the Misha ones I've tried. The only thing I didn't like was the fragrance that almost all of them have had. Otherwise, I would use them, if they didn't have fragrance in it, I'd use them every day. So I really, I really like their brand, their sunscreens, they're great, except for the darn fragrance. Ugh, that, that's why I was so excited about this Hello Sunday brand, because they make several different formulations, but they all are fragrance-free, so it's all great for sensitive skin. So I believe Misha has not, they make their own, so they wouldn't be able to use that loophole, as far as I understand. They also own the brand Apu, A-P-I-E-U. And they make sunscreens for a pew, so you might that might be worth checking out that brand too if you can tolerate the fragrance because a pew is a little bit more affordable than Misha, but it's made by the same company. So, otherwise, I like the finish of their sunscreens. At this point, I still trust them. I'm hesitant, but I still trust them at this point. They haven't had any issues yet. I want to know if they're doing their own testing. I haven't seen anything else about that, and I really. In most of these, like, test things, I haven't seen Mission in any of them. But at this point, 
I still trust them, but that's subject to change at any time lately because you just don't know. And it's it's not even totally a K-Beauty thing. It is at this point with this loophole, but, I mean, there's all other brands have had issues too. So I want to mention that. So trust but verify. That's what I'll say with everything, especially skincare. So anyway, yeah, so I, the a few ones, I, I, at this point, I still trust them. I just, the filters, the ones I've tested, I've never got burned using Miss Share Pew. So, at this point, I still trust them, but, trust but verify. I mean, isn't Tree, this one, I mean, it's not my favorite texture and finish, but this one is, I've never got burned using this one. This one's made by Colmar Korea, which, at this point, I've not seen them have any issues with any of their sunscreens, so... Uh, maybe there are still a few manufacturers that weren't really exploiting people. So hopefully, but I'll feel better once I can really verify. And this one from Make Prem, this is another brand I still trust. They, at this point, I've not seen any issues with any of their sunscreens. This is their newer one. It has a terrible white cast, but it's very protective. But terrible white cast. So, and, uh... Innisfree, I think, they make their own. So, I actually have a list of the brands that make their own. Oh, and then we should talk about Casa X really quick. But, hang on one second. Let me see if I can find this list. Okay, so there is a list of K-Beauty brands that make their own sunscreens. Uh, LG, The Face Shop, CNP Laboratory, The History of Wu, Sorry Han, Sum 37, A More Pacific, which I believe owns Misha, right? That owns Appeal. Uh, In is free, Laneige, A2 Day House, Solwasu, Era Iop, Iliun, Mamond, Primera, and Espoir. So at this point, those are sunscreens which I have a feeling I have a little bit more trust in those ones made by those brands at this point than most of the other ones. So, uh, yeah, In is free. I really wanted to like this one, but. This one was just too scented. So, anyway, so, yeah, I think Amore Pacific owns Misha. I'm almost certain, so, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, yeah, so Make Prem released their, I believe they did release their tests, the Make Prem ones, and, you know what, they don't, I, you know what I just wish? I wish there was a worldwide law that every brand had to release the percentage of filters in their sunscreens. Because in the U.S., if you pick up a sunscreen and made in the U.S., you instantly see 12% zinc oxide, 5.4% titanium dioxide. You instantly see what percentages. And I think had people known instantly that that Purito sunscreen had such a low percentage, a lot of people guessed, but I think people would have it, this would have happened a lot faster. So it would be really nice if all sunscreens had to list the percentage. So at least people can know what they're using, especially when uh, some countries, they don't have to list in order of the amount of sunscreen that can be listed alphabetically. Some companies do that, not, not all of them, but then you'd have no clue. If it's an alphabetical list of ingredients on a sunscreen and there's no percentage, you have no clue what it could be. You just hope that it's been tested. And at this point, it's, yeah kind of sad so well I'm excited so the mission didn't irritate your skin that's I'm glad I mean I like their sunscreens and you know when I first got into skincare they were one, some of the first sunscreens I ever tried that I actually liked using and the older I get the more sensitive my skin gets although having a ridiculously long routine doesn't help with that so I know I wish a more Pacific was cruelty free recently a law, I believe it was May 1st, went into place in China where they are not requiring animal testing on products that come in there except for products that are considered drugs, which are anti-aging products, skin lightening products, uh, sunscreens, which is basically probably the majority of things. So typically just a normal serum going into China won't have to be tested unless it claims to be anti-aging, anti-acne, sun protecting. So it's a good step in the right direction for China, but it's still going to require that probably most things are still tests on animals. But it's still a step in the right direction, and hopefully 
they keep going that direction to be more more animal friendly so okay Ian commented more Pacific does not own Misha okay thank you maybe it's just site maybe Misha's individual I can't remember off the top of my head so our local beauty guru said alcohol purifies the skin and excites it excites it wow I need some alcohol is that drinking it maybe I don't know okay so okay so yeah so I really wish I think it'd be much better if we had to list the percentage of everything but okay so Casa X where did my Casa X on screen go I have it somewhere oh here we go so somebody posted that Casa X Australia told them the SPF in this was 38 not 50 and then COSRX told me something different, and then they made a statement saying, no, we haven't finished testing. That employee didn't know what they were talking about. And I think at this point we're still waiting for the test to come back. I have not heard anything else up to date. So if you're using it right now, I guess I would just, to be safe, assume it's SPF 38 and not 50 at this point. So hopefully they'll be done with tests soon. It's crazy that we're still doing all these tests. I mean, it's been going on for, it's been a long time. And we're still waiting for all these tests to come back. But the round lab one did well, so I don't know. I don't know how this one did so well because it, it's literally like it's so nice. I don't know. I just have to put it on because it just feels so nice on my hands. But it's this one just, ah, I don't know. I still get nervous. It's just so good. I don't know. I need a spect I need to use cameraman to test all these sunscreens. So, there we go. Let's see. Yeah, applying alcohol topically is okay, but consuming is way worse for the skin. Huh? Yeah, I would agree. Tinted moisturizers. Yeah, tinted moisturizers are... You know what? The inclusion of some of the iron oxides to tint them can make their SPF protection a little bit better, actually. But the reef safe thing is still... It's interesting because there's kind of two sides of the reef, reef, reef thing, and here. some people say that the reef is uh, injured from some sunscreens, and there's other people that say that's not true, but I have a feeling whenever people are wearing sunscreen close to a reef or in the ocean, it's not a great thing, especially for chemical ones and certain chemical sunscreens, so I don't know. You know what, I'm in Minnesota, so... I'm nowhere near the ocean. I never see it. But if I were near the ocean, I guess I'd probably use something mineral. So I'm excited for the Good Molecules toner. I'm very excited to see and test that one out. So it's at Beautylish live now. I'm just wondering how long it will take to get to Ulta. Because Beautylish has a, a $35 free shipping thing. I have a mental impairment with paying shipping. I just can't do it. I don't know why. But I will either add tons of more crap to my cart to get the free shipping, which I don't need. I just can't pay it, so I don't know. Bioderma, Bioderma has great sunscreens. In their tests, I've never seen a Bioderma sunscreen do terrible. So, so far I, I have, I trust Bioderma, so. Oh my gosh, one of your friends uses vodka as a toner. That's crazy, I hadn't even thought of that, but I guess that's getting the most out of your money, right? It's probably better, yeah, better to apply it topically than drink it. I don't know. Wow, that's crazy. Well, DIY, do it yourself, right? Maybe they're onto something. How does her skin look with the vodka? What happens if she gets pulled over? Does she smell like alcohol all day? That would be interesting. Huh, very crazy. So, vodka is, yeah, it makes sense. Vodka is fermented. It, it totally makes sense. So, that's crazy. No camera? No. Nope. Uh, Let me check the track. Okay. I, th I thought it was supposed the to be. Camera's the camera is supposed to come today, but it's not here. So, okay. Good Molecule says a few days for their toner and the rest of their products to be at Ulta. Okay. Oh, they're in Ulta. Oh, that's exciting. I love Good Molecules. I, their last, that BHA cream I didn't like. Well, it wasn't terrible. It just wasn't super exciting but overall most of their products 
I mean, they actually have lowered the price of some of their products. Where most brands are raising the prices, they actually have lowered the price. I mean, that's unheard of. I can't think of any brand that's ever had a product out and lowered the price of it. I can't, not nothing else other than this comes to mind. So, so Face Theory is another brand which I absolutely really enjoy. So, Face Theory, they did so right by me. I bought three serums from them, and one of the serums had someone complain about it, and instead of dealing with it, they just refunded everybody that had bought that, which is amazing. I mean, I didn't even ask for it. I didn't even know there was any issues, but a couple of people complained about it, and they just refunded it. So Face Theory will forever be, I'll be impressed with them. So, I don't know. So Drunk Elephant, I, I got to do their... Uh, resurfacing serum. Also, I was suggested to do a versus of the Drunk Elephant Proteiny resurfacing serum with the Sunday Riley Good Jeans. So I think I'm going to do a versus of those two because I love to compare those two brands. I just I find it so interesting. There, they have a lot a lot of things in common, but they're I also find them so different. So I don't know. Oh, Sunday Riley lowered prices two years ago. Well. They lowered them, and then they charged 35 bucks for this. Come on. 35 bucks. That's crazy. It just doesn't encourage people to apply it liberally, you know? So. You want to open this? Sephora? Mm. Huh? Sure. I got a Sephora package in the mail, though. No camera, but. No camera, but I got Sephora. You know what? You know what website really impressed me the other day? Style Korean. I ordered something from them, and it literally came within, like, five days. I have no idea how they did that, style Korean, but anyway. Uh, what I, you, know what I'm, you know what I'm really wondering about is when some of these other sunscreens are going to be back in stock. Oh, Christina, I've got a couple Garnier sunscreens, so, you know, we got to, you write that down, cameraman? Review the Garnier sunscreens. I'm very excited that they're now cruelty-free. It makes them even better, in my opinion. Let's see what I got. Oh, Paula's Choice Cleanser. A couple people asked about it, so... You can never have enough cleansing balms, so... I don't know. Their discoloration serum I really liked, but... Paula's Choice has been hit or miss. It just seems like they're making... For a while, they are making, like... They were introducing, like, one new product a week. It was out of control. But now they've kind of eased back, so I'm a little bit more excited when they release something now. So I hope... It's kind of like the Inculus thing, where, like, Inculus releasing, like, five new products a week. It's out of control, although now they've kind of calmed down a little bit. But I get nervous when brands are, like, out of control with releasing new things all the time. Here's something else new. Here's something else new. Here's so You know, it's like, don't you have good products out already? Why do you have to release, like, a gazillion more products? And the Inky List, I don't know, their marketing and things, I'm a little, I'm a little put off them. Their old products are great, but their newer ones have been just hit or miss, and their hair products were all terrible. I hated them. So, oh, you don't have to shop. You can shop through me. Save your money. Don't shop. <laughs> or shop. I don't know. You don't have to spend all your money. You can save some of it. But Yeah, so this will be interesting. I don't know. I thought the bottle was going to be bigger because for a cleansing bottle, when you really have to use a lot of it, this is not a large size. So, I don't know. We'll see. So, Claudia, hello. You caught my stream. I'm so excited. So, you guys have any questions? Oh, should I go on a rant about herbivore? I just want to spread this word as much as I possibly can. This does not contain bakuchiol. I just want to spread that. Because nobody else is really talking about this. So, this is a purple colored exfoliation serum. It's not bakuchiol. I just want to spread it because nobody else really is talking about it. So, I just had to spread that out as much as I can. I can't believe they're still selling it. That's what ticks me off. The fact that they took that name, put it on there, even though it doesn't contain it, and they're still selling it like nothing ever happened. I mean, I don't know. That's what makes me untrusting of a lot of brands. I can't believe they're still selling this, and I bet out of the entire skincare community, I bet probably 99% of people don't know about this. And so I'm trying to get that word out, but yes, anyway, so... So Garnier sunscreens, I've got a couple of them, so I'll definitely review them. But I'll probably review them after sunscreen week because I haven't had a chance to test them as much. So, But if there's a specific Garnier one, just let me know. I'll definitely try it out. They came out with a newer one, too, which might have been, 
I cannot I saw. I'm gonna have to check that out. Or maybe it was L'Oreal. Oh my god. What? The chat is just I I'm sorry. No no I'm no, getting I, behind. No no I I haven't Check out Dumalur. Dermalur. Dermalure. Why can't I t say that? Dermalure is vitamin C. I'll have to. Yes, style does take forever for shipping. Style Korean, that thing was so fast, I couldn't believe it. I ordered several La Roche Posay other sunscreens, and they're like new aqua gel one from a little pharmacy in Spain. And it was shipped uh, the 1st of April, then it went to Netherlands, sat there for like 10 days, then it went to Chicago, and from Chicago went to New York, from New York it went to uh, Colorado. Maybe it'll arrive in the next month. I was really hoping to review some of those for sunscreen week, but they're not here, so. But La Roche Posay does have some great sunscreens. They know what they're doing, too, so. Yeah, Herbivore, this was a real letdown that they did this. It's sneaky, it's underhanded, and the fact that they charge over $50 for something, people that buy this want Bakuchiol. They do not want a purple amethyst exfoliant serum. But. They got, I, I'm certain of it, that they got in a fight with the people at, man, there's like one manufacturer of Balcuchiol molecule, which is extracted from this plant. I'm sure they got in a fight with them over money or something, so then they just decided, hey, we'll just keep the name, we'll just make it purpler, and include more exfoliation. And it's really sneaky, and it's the thing that makes me very untrustworthy of brands. I just never thought that skincare and beauty would be so so much drama all the time even just like the youtube side of it just the people getting in fights and things like that or <laughs> starting random fights i don't know so oh see you got a refund that's awesome that's awesome it is a fake product there's no bakuchi all in here it's ridiculous oh i just get so irritated when brands do that it's like this i mean they could have made it known or like had a little star like new formula they could have done that because so many people won't even know. I wouldn't have known unless uh, somebody would have commented it to me yesterday. I wouldn't have known. I wouldn't have noticed. So, although I have a feeling at some point I would have scanned this and then saw, wow, they took out the peptide that I liked, which is the main ingredient that I liked. So, I ain't mad at you. <laughs> I like that. Let's see. Oh, so the PC cleanser has been really nice. You have to use a lot of product. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little bit... 3.5 ounces for a cleansing balm is not a lot. And it's almost 30 bucks. Although, I didn't pay 30 but I think I got on sale. Maybe I did. I don't know. I'm so paranoid about... Oh, the a Cure Radically Rejuvenate Overnight Bakuchiol Treatment. I'll be reviewing that, I believe, next week. I got it. I really like it, actually. A Cure can be so hit or miss with some of their products. Sometimes a cure comes out, they do like, they release a gazillion products, and then they have a few hits and they seem to keep those around. So a cure like recently released like 10 new products and that Bakuchiol treatment was one of them. I really did like that. But the Color Science sunscreens, I like them. I mean, they're made in the U.S. So the instant downfall is the UVA protection may be okay. Uh, I would go with their mineral sunscreens. Personally, if it's made in the U.S. and it's a chemical sunscreen, I'm inst instantly not very interested in it, generally, just because they can't use any of the new chemical filters that are so nice, that make sunscreens really nice, and their UVA protection is a bummer, generally. If it's a mineral sunscreen made in the U.S., then I'm different, because mineral sunscreens generally are do a decent job, but... It's a chemical, chemical sunscreen in the U.S. It's not even the manufacturer's fault, but generally, it's just not going to be as good as a chemical sunscreen made anywhere else, even anywhere else other than the U.S. So, yeah. So, okay. Do I still use the TNS Advanced? Uh, you know, I just ran out of it. I just finished it. But the next time I see it, that it's on a decent sale, I'm going to pick it up again because I was really impressed with it. I really did like it. It's expensive, but if I can get it, I would say I would say my mind threshold is like 30% off. If I can get it for 30% off, I'll buy it again. Because it, it is amazing how big of a difference it makes. And I, I read an article today that uh, plastic surgeries, or not plastic surgeries, but uh, fi what would you call it? Dermological, uh, 
plastic sur uh, what do they call in this article? Hang on. Cosmetic procedures have like drip, have like gone through the roof since this thing started. So they saw like a huge increase in people getting Botox as well as a filler, another filler they said. So they said Botox, they had 2.6 million uh, people get Botox last year compared to the year before is 1.3 million. So it's like a 54% increase. So I don't know. People say Botox really works for migraines. So if I ever do it, I'm going to do it and I'm going to make cameraman film it because maybe I'll try it. Although now I've really been trying to drink more water. My headaches have gotten a little bit better. So anyway, I'm totally digressing. The May Love Retinol Hide Serum is back in stock. It is. I just bought it. I got that email yesterday. Boom, I ordered it. So I'm excited to review that one. So, I heard of Beauty Pacifique. Danish Dermabren has loads of vitamin A with three different types. So I'm going to have to check that out. Beauté. How do you like my accent? Beauté Pacifique. Je parle français. Oui. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I'll check that out, though. Oh, another one's a... I'll review this one for sunscreen week, but I do like this one. This one's zinc. I like mineral-based U.S. sunscreens are good. Chemical-based sunscreens in the U.S. just can't compete. They're at a disadvantage. So, I you know what? Some of the... I can't imagine... I, how much does Botox cost? It can't be that expensive. 2.6 million people are doing it. Can it? I don't know. Although, if you're kind of in quarantine and you're not traveling or doing anything, I guess you have more money, so. But then why would you do it if you're going to sit at home by yourself? I don't know. I don't quite get it, but I don't know. No, the, the, the uh, Skin Medic at TNS, there is, they, that's an amazing product. I mean, the whole, uh, the growth factors and things are controversial. There's still not a lot of long-term safety, but it, it, if anybody that's tried it for a couple days, you'll notice that your skin looks better just in a couple days. So it sucks. Why can't anything else be like that that's really cheap? I don't know. It's got to be expensive or else it wouldn't be that great, right? I, but it does make a huge difference. So, yeah. Oh, I'm part Hungarian. I am. I'm going to ask my dad what else I am because I think I'm Hungarian, German, Norwegian, Ufta, Ubecha, Ludafisk. I don't know what else I am. There's something else, but anyway. So, so a few hundred treatment, three to five hundred dollars for Bo how long does Botox last? I mean, if you had to do that like every month, that would be five hundred. You know, if I stopped drinking coffee, I could probably afford that really fast. <laughs> so, you know what? It, you're gonna you've gotten three facials. If you want Botox, do it. I don't know. As long, I don't think there's anything bad that, well, I I think there is something bad that could happen from it. Because I, when I see the commercials, they mention it. There's something, but you know what? I don't know. Take care of yourself. I mean, you can't take it with you when you go, so I don't know. I mean, but save some money, but spend a little bit on yourself, too. So, three months. Okay, so that's not as bad. So, if it's like 300 bucks. Three time, every three months, that'd be four times a year. So that'd be $1,200 a year. That's not that much. If it makes you feel, look good, you know, if it makes you feel better. I don't know. Someday, I promise I'll do it. And I'll record it. So, anyway. Every three. So some people can get away with six months. So that's even more. For, those are lucky people. Then that's like half the price. It's like 50% off then. So... Oh, Botox for migraines is covered by insurance. I'm going to have to check that. My insurance is not very good. It doesn't really pay for anything, though. It's a bummer. You know, when I went in because I broke all my fingers, this winter I got the bill. It was like $1,000. <laughs> and you know what? I really didn't even need to go in. I just didn't know what else to do because my fingers were hurting. I was crying. What do you do? You go to the doctor. It was the cameraman. Yeah, cameraman said, it'll be fine. Just give it a little bit. But it hurts so bad, I didn't know what else to do. I didn't even get any good, get any, get any perks out of it. I got the thing scanned, and I left. It was like, there's a thousand bucks gone. I could have done Botox with that. Had I not For smashed my fingers. For a year. Ah, see? see? You know what? It's like, 
It's like the garage door is conspiring against me or something. I don't know. <laughs> <sighs> Post office says it's still coming. Okay, well, that's good. Wow. So some people can metabolize Botox faster. You know what? I'm going to have to read up all about it. So. Oh, Carol. Hi, Carol. I love when I see your name pop up. That's so nice. I just love that I know everybody. I feel like we're friends. You know what I mean? I feel like I know all of you. I see your name pop up. It's like, oh, here's Carol. So I'm excited I'm getting together with one of my friends who has like the opposite skin tone of me. And I told her when I see her, I'm bringing all these sunscreens for her to test and tell me what has a bad white cast and what doesn't. Because for me, it's hard to judge. But for people with deeper skin tones, they can instantly see like this one is not good. or It's very white. So I'm very excited. So I've known her for... I've known her since I was 12, so I've known her for a long time. She had just come to the U.S. from the Philippines, and she didn't speak much English, but we got along great. So she sat ahead of me in math class, and then I, sometimes she'd give me the answers. But anyway, so I'm excited. So I've got a lot of sunscreens to bring to test to work. So. Oh, Cyprus, hello. Have we been to Cyprus? Yeah. Yeah. Technically, I think. I was we're, there for like an hour. A day. A day. But it was cool. Someday. We Someday were, I'll we get back. We were in the, uh, the south part of... The, south part Turkish of Cyprus? Part. Oh, not the Maybe. Turkish part? Yeah. Okay. Well, was the Turkish part of Cyprus when we'd be in Turkey? Right, but it's the same island. It, oh. Right, don't you remember the no man, the, the border where... The, yeah, I do. Yeah, that was huh. Cyprus. Don't mess around with borders. Like, I'm just going to sneak in through this border into this country, right? Okay. So, uh, I, you know, this year I am going to do all my empties. Last year I got, like, out of control with the recycling end of it. And then I realized I only had, like, half the empties. This year I'm keeping them all. And oh, right now, crazy. right now they all fit into one of the large Sephora bags. So I don't think it's going to be as crazy as it was, like, three years ago when I was really getting into it. Like, out of control. Like, hey, it's been two hours. i got to redo my skincare routine. So this year I'm a little bit more in control. A little bit, but not much, so. Italy. Italy, wow. God, the yacht, when I was in Italy, the food, every meal was amazing. I love pasta, so I don't know. So does Botox get rid of deep forehead wrinkles on men? I think it can, but I think maybe for deep wrinkles, maybe like, maybe like a filler thing might be better. I don't know. Don't listen to me on this because I'm really not, not very... No BS beauty tip. Don't mess with porters. <laughs> I'm just going to sneak into this one. I forgot my passport. Remember those good old days? <laughs> you could forget your passport and you won't go to jail. <laughs> when you didn't need a passport to go to yeah. Canada? Yeah. Now, now you need a passport to go to Canada. You can't even go to Canada. You can't. Right yeah, that's true. Has anyone done microneedling? Uh, I have. Personally, if you haven't done it, it's better if you can go to somebody to have it done. I have done it myself, and I really recommend it to a lot of people. And then I saw a post from some gal who had beautiful skin. She did microneedling. The first picture, she looked amazing. She was young. It's perfect skin. And then she microneedled, and then two days later she took a picture. And somehow bacteria somehow got in this process, and her entire face was all broken out. It was horrible. So ever since I saw that, I've never recommend anybody does it themselves because if you do it right it's great but if you if one thing goes wrong you can just mess up your skin so fast but if everything goes right and there's no issues it makes a huge difference so I try and do it like once a month or so there's a while where I do it like every couple weeks but uh, if you use a really nice peptide serum before and after but if a little bit of bacteria gets in there it will mess up everything. So if you do it, you have to get a sterile microneedle. I saw like Marshalls the other day was selling these. Oh, they have obviously been opened and touched microneedles. And I was horrified when I saw that. Because I'm like, somebody's going to buy that and use that. And somebody has touched these needles. And that whatever is on their hands is now going to be into your skin. So it's nothing to mess with. So uh, if you do it yourself, you really have to sterilize everything. Sterilize your hands. The treatments you use on it has you have to be clean washing everything so so I typically recommend to go to a professional ever since I saw that picture I just I can't get out of my head that she looked like this beautiful person and she, you know, she's gonna heal 
but she just messed it up and it's going to be months before it looks good again. So, anyway. Yeah, so it's nothing to play with. Like like uh, Carol mentioned, like the pen, they have like a pen thing. And with the pen, you can replace those with sterilized needle heads so you know it's clean. So, and then you just throw it away when you're done. A lot of micro needles are reused. So it's nothing to mess with because if it goes bad, it goes really bad. <laughs> but if it works, it looks great, so. Oh, thoughts on the Casa RX Aloe Sun Cream? I am uh, waiting for more tests. Waiting for more tests. At this point, if you use it, assume it's like an SPF 38. Just in case that was right, that rumor. So, go study, Claudia. You got to get good grades. Study. Let's see. Yeah. Party. Party. Don't study. No. Study. <laughs> look at me. I'm in front of the camera like a cameraman. If he would have studied, he'd be here. <laughs> I don't know. Did Brad Pitt go to college? No. No? No, Brad Pitt party. Oh. Did he finish high school, though? <laughs> you got to finish high school. Yeah. Yeah. I, the the micro needling is, uh, I mean, you're, you're injecting little things into your skin, so... If it goes bad, it goes really bad. So, I don't know. Mexico, hello! Oh, hello! Tapish, is that how you say your name? I always That's how I say it in my head when I see it pop up. So, you're doing your skincare routine. I love it. Got to do that. My morning routine has gotten so fast. You know what the biggest thing is? I bought these eyeshadow sticks. That saves like 20 minutes. Then I don't have to do my eyeshadow. I just smear it all over my thing and then I go. So... Yeah, you can't party with COVID, cameraman. <laughs> can't do that. It's not good. So, Jen Amber has a YouTube channel, micro needling. Oh, I've heard of her. Yeah, she's got tools. Yes, I've heard of her. Yeah, that maybe that's a good place to start. So, micro needling and derma stamp got rid of fifty percent of acne scars. It is amazing though, micro needling. I had a friend that had it done profession on her legs for stretch marks that I couldn't see. But she could see them, but whatever. But she said that was the most painful thing on her legs. And they used like a three-inch or two-inch uh, needle I don't, for stretch marks that weren't there. I mean, I get it. She sees it. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter what I see. But anyway, so. <laughs> Yeah, with microneedling, it is, if it goes wrong, it is bad. I'll never get that. I wish I had the picture up, but, I mean, she was beautiful, probably young. I mean, her skin was perfect. And the next picture was just the most horrifying thing. So, hopefully, by, I mean, that was months ago I saw it. Hopefully, her skin is back to normal now. I'm sure she'll never do that. I mean, if you get one little molecule of bacteria in there, it, it spreads everywhere. So, even if you have, like, any little breakouts, even if you don't have any, if, if that my micro needle has been got any bacteria on it from anything, so and even with alcohol, if you are trying to um, clean it, even alcohol can't like fully sterilize it. So it's that's why sometimes some things like that are better with a professional. So that's what I'm gonna say because you just never know. Maybe it's some some type of luck. So yeah, retinol also is amazing for scarring. If you don't have a retinol in your routine, it helps with so many things. It helps with, it helps prevent and treat breakouts, scarring, skin texture, sun damage. It's amazing. Same thing with niacinamide. So it might be better to start out there, and then if it doesn't get better or get the results you want, then it might be better just to save the money and see somebody that knows what they're doing. And the results might be better than you can do at your home. So, yeah, microneedling, it's nothing to mess around with. So one little piece of bacteria that you can't even see can destroy your skin like that and it'll take weeks or months for it to heal so laura mercier caviar stick i love those i think the ones i got were from color pop because they were like cheap but who is Haley bieber is that, is that justin, justin bieber it's they said Haley bieber is that his wife i guess is he married is justin bieber got married <laughs> we're so i am i'm a believer huh Oh, I said his name, Tabish. I said it correctly. Oh, right on. I got that going for me. That's the one thing I can say correctly, so. Firming up eyelids. Uh, yeah, I want... Have you tried the uh, Cosrx Peptide Snail Cream? I think peptides for firming are great. Retinol on the eyelids are probably a bit too harsh. But, 
anything with peptides in it does help firm. So, let's see. I don't think I put retinol on a damp face. Unless it's like damp from another serum. Because it might, um, might kind of affect the potency of it. But it won't hurt anything. So, Justin got married, I guess. They get married, like, recently. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> he's from Canada, isn't he? Justin Bieber? Yeah. He's... Yeah, you betcha. He's from Canada. Sorry. 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 Huh. Well, he's off the market. Maybe they'll stay together. I don't know. I always <laughs> thought he was going to end up with that one chick. That Gomez lady. Selena. I thought he, they were going to end up together, but... Obviously not. TMZ with no BSD. I know. Man. Best item for sebaceous... Seba <laughs> I can't say. Uh, for sebaceous filaments, like blackhead type things, I guess a, a salicylic acid BHA treatment. It can help, but typically a lot... Most of those are pretty genetic. I mean, you can help reduce them, but they're never really going to totally be gone. But... Uh, one I really like is the Paula's Choice 4% BHA treatment. Um, yeah, but anybody else got any BHA recommendations? I know that one's a little bit pricey for a lot of people. I really like it, but... So, he got married two years ago. Come here for your breaking celebrity Yeah, you know, I know who Post Malone is. I've heard of him. He's got tattoos all over his face. I looked at a picture of him yesterday. He has tattoos all over his face. On his face! You can't make those go... I mean, you can... On your face! Why would you do that? Ah! It just sounds painful, first of all. And what happens when you're 70 and you decide the uh, tattoo on your face isn't cool? I don't know. That's crazy that people... I don't know. I'm a baby. I couldn't imagine a tattoo on my face. It sounds so painful, so... Let's see. Oh, the Pipette sunscreen I'm reviewing for Sunscreen Week. I just wrote that one yesterday. So, the Pipette is a good dupe for the Biosense. He's got tattoos on his face. It's like with his teeth. I don't know. Are those real teeth? I don't know. Let's see here. Oh, that might... Oh, I think they're... Oops. Ugh. Them, they're, they're diamond, like... Uh, oh. Yeah. I guess if you've got money. The Paula's Choice... BHA-9 is a good spot treatment for, like, stubborn spots. I wouldn't use it all over your face because it's very strong, but for stubborn spots, I use it occasionally, so. The Bliss, uh, you know what? I don't know if I've tried that one from Bliss, but I tried, they came out with, like, a few products. Maybe I did try, is that the one, the blue? The, like, light blue bottle? But Bliss, like, redid their stuff, like, in the last year or so, and they they did a good job kind of rebranding in a way, and I thought their new products were nice and affordable. So, the Osmosis Retinal Hide. I think I have that one, too. Yeah, Osmosis. They're, like, a little bit more affordable, but still expensive, but more affordable than other ones. The uh, Allies of Skin. Their products are really good. I really like their vitamin C. It's really expensive. They had issues with the packaging, huge issues. And they finally redid the packaging. They, I think they changed their packaging on like three times. But overall, their products are good. Most of them, I think all of them are fragrance-free, pretty safe for sensitive skin. Uh, overall, they're good. But for the price, I think they need to have their pack. I think maybe the packaging works now. I know they had like several incarnations of it. I accidentally bought the vitamin C I got, and I couldn't get dispense. And then I emailed their customer care, and they just sent me out a new bottle without asking for the old one back. So then I actually sent that second bottle to uh, Patreon Carrie, and she just uh, poured it into a dropper bottle and used it and really liked it. But for that price, you can't have issues with your packaging when you're over $100. You have to have that down. But they were a newer brand at the time, so I, I get it. But if Allies of Skin is a little bit too expensive, they own the brand PSA Skin, and they have uh, similar products. PSA Skin is all fragrance-free uh, and much more affordable. So if Allies of Skin is a little bit expensive, PSA Skin is worth checking out. And I'll, I've tried most of their products, and I've had good luck with all of them so far. So I hope they don't screw up their brand by saying stupid things on social media because I heard a rumor that one of their uh, people wasn't very nice to a customer on Instagram. So hopefully I don't hear any more about it. I don't want to hear any more about them being stupid. 
you know, I guess it's got to be difficult for brands because they've got people reaching out to them through Instagram, through Twitter, through their website, through their email, through this vendor or that vendor. What else am I missing? TikTok, probably. So they've got to hire people to talk to customers through all those. And uh, it's probably not very easy to have quality control over some, who are some of the people are and if they mess up, like... Um, that one uh, employee of Drunk Elephant accidentally switched from his personal Instagram account to his work one and then said some rude things. So it's got to be kind of difficult to manage some of that. So anyway, mm -hmm. totally off the subject. But anyway, so the Medicaid products I've tried, I've had good luck, but they're expensive. I don't think they're, I don't know if they're better than Tretinin, but Tretinin's kind of like the top of the line for retinol, so... Anything else, I guess, nothing is going to be as good as that. That one has got so much research on it for a long time and so much proof that it works. So, tretinin for anti-aging is probably the top of a line. So, but, let's see, do I like chemical sunscreens or mineral sunscreens? You know what, I, just depends on the day, what I'm doing, what I'm testing, but I don't really necessarily have a preference, but I guess if I'm going to do like a makeup look and going somewhere I prefer like a really light feeling chemical sunscreen but for like a day out a normal day I like mineral ones so I guess I'm not very specific so I kind of just just depends on the formula and the product so the level serum yes I like the level serum by regimen labs that serum is really good for dark spots there's been a lot of good ones, though. That one came out. The Topicals Faded one is really nice. There's a lot of really, nowadays, good for dark spots, a lot of good serums. I still, I know a lot of people don't like hydroquinone, but for some people, if you use it as directed, it can be effective. But a lot of people don't like it because it might not be super effective for everybody. So, let's see. Yeah, Pipette, I've only seen it on their website, Amazon, and iHerb, I believe, still has Pipette. iHerb, iHerb.com, they're a pretty decent site. And they, they have really fast shipping, and it's really affordable, too. So, let's see. Cot sunscreen is good. Uh, do you like, Ricky, do you like uh, mineral-type sunscreens? The Cot's generally is mineral, but this one's really nice. BB. I'll review this one for Sunscreen Week too, but this one's really nice and smooth and it's got a slight tint to it, a slight yellow tint, so it doesn't have a, as noticeable of a white cast. But for mineral sunscreen, this one, I really am enjoying it. It's hard to get, especially if you're in the U.S. I don't know. This one's mineral, but anyway, so yeah, this one's really nice too. So, oh, hydroquinone not, not available over the counter. Is that in, I think, Oh, I wonder if that's here. I know there's a lot of stuff going on with it over the last year or so. Love from Norway. I'm Norwegian, too. We're Norwegian. You betcha. So. Anybody got any other questions or anything? Yeah. Oh, when is the award ceremony this year? Will there be an award for most fraudulent product? Ooh, I like that. Is there a question about Korean sunscreen? I like that. Most fraudulent pro I got to remember that one. Help me remember that. Cameraman, most fraudulent product of the year. Uh, let's see. Oh, I thought I heard Lincoln. Sorry. Sorry, no, I missed it. Man. Can you read it? I just can't find Have it. Have you now. lost faith in Korean sunscreen uh, after what? A little happened? bit. A little bit. Yeah, I mean, Korea screwed up with this loophole. They screwed up. I hope they know it. A lot of, most of the sunscreens that were impacted were actually ones used by people in other countries, not so much Korea. Most of them weren't really Korean Korean. Round Lab is one of the more popular brands in Korea. But from what I know of, most of the sunscreens were really ones that were sold to other countries. So I have lost a little bit of faith. And I hope they fix this loophole. So Galactomyces are, it's very good for skin. You know what though? There isn't like one ingredient that is the best for skin. Skin needs a little bit of so many different things. So can't focus on like one ingredient and get everything but galactomyces like in an essence or toner is great it's really it can help fight acne it help brighten skin anti-aging it's good so uh do we have a date for the awards ceremony i don't know no before black friday yeah a week or two before yeah black friday. so
So, let's see. Try CeraVe Mineral Sunscreen. I like their Hydrating Mineral Sunscreen. That one was pretty good. So, oh, sorry. Uh, this is the BB Day Defense Mineral SPF. This one's really nice. Uh, no, no fragrance in it or anything. So, I'll review this one, too, because I really like this one. This one's a really nice mineral one, and no cast. But I'm going to try on my friend Regina, so we'll see what she says. Because she will have a different take on it than I do, I'm sure. So, anyway. You should wrap up. I need to cut the Okay. Grass. Why do some mineral sunscreens get grainy? You know what? Uh, first Day Beauty had that problem with this one. This one was really nice, and then they took it off the market. And then they made a statement. They took it off the market because it got grainy. I'm guessing it's from the iron oxides. Sometimes liquid formulas can be harder, just how they dispense in the formula. So it's not all of them, but just some of them just get that way. So Moisturizer for very sensitive skin. I, hang on, I've got one. Okay, so hang on. This one I really have just started using. I really like it. And hang on, there's one more. I can't find it. Hang on. Oh! The A2 Day House Centella line they just came out with. So for very dry, sensitive skin, these two are great. Can't wait to review them. Highly recommend checking them out. If you can get them. So this one you can, I think they have an Amazon store with a verified seller. <gasps> We've got a baby! Lincoln! Lincoln wants to say hi to everybody. Come here, duty! Lincoln! 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 What sunscreen do you like? Come here! He was sleeping. Oh, duty! He's just a baby. He was all over me before. Oh. Lincoln! I gotta find something that's very scented, and then he'll be all over it. Okay. Okay, well, I think I'm gonna... Huh? I'm gonna shut down, because... I have to cut the grass. You have to cut the grass. But, I'll do another one, maybe, like, in a month exactly. And happy birthday to all my birthdays. My birthday buddies. I love that. So, what is up with the Beanie Babies? How do you know them for Patreon? I don't know why we started it. We just, it was a, just a fun idea. But ever, I've got the name on everyone. We put a label on them. And someday, when we stop doing it, we'll send them out to every Patreon. So, <laughs> If they make it through Lincoln. Yeah, if, if Lincoln doesn't destroy them. <laughs> Some days, I just catch him just sitting here staring at them, actually. Sometimes he knocks him off the shelf, but he hasn't destroyed anybody yet, so. He's a little baby. Okay. We're in Norway. You have oh. no idea, do you? Somebody asked where. We're no, no idea. <laughs> right. No idea. But i got to find out more, so. Anyway. Well, thank you guys so much. Happy birthday, my birthday babies. Buddies are my birthday babies, so. <laughs> anyway, I'll do another one. And you know what, if we get any, like, crazy news things, I'll do another one right away. But And I'll keep you guys posted on, uh. Other sunscreens, I'm always checking it out to see what else is going on. So, thank you guys so much. I think the sun is out, so I'm going to get to test my UV stickers and my HelioCare, which you don't have to buy the brand, but you can get the extract, which is, I can't, Polypodium Leucotomus. There's research on it, so before you go outside, you don't have to buy the brand, you can buy a generic one, but this is like the only supplement that I actually believe really does something. So, anyway. Did you see my comment? Minnesota, goodbye. Y'all, you betcha. <laughs> okay, love you guys. Thank oh, you guys so much. Say hi to Israel before you go. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are amazing. Love to Israel. Another, the Dead Sea was amazing. That was amazing. I don't know. Nobody else wanted to go to the Dead Sea but me, but it's so cool to float. Except for my dad couldn't figure out how to float, and then he got the salt in his eyes, and it was a whole thing, but anyway. Right. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys more later. Okay, bye guys. Thank you.